In this tutorial, I'm going to set up Unity Project with the Mixed Reality Toolkit and Ross Sharp and run it on the HoloLens 2. Then I'm going to send data over a Ross topic in my virtual machine using Ross Bridge WebSocket and will receive the data in my demo program on the HoloLens. I'll first begin by showing you my Unity version. I'm using LTS version 2019.4.15 and the modules that I will meet that I'm using are the universal windows platform build support and windows build support. All right, so next I'll bring up Visual Studio. So I'm using Visual Studio Community 2019 16.8.3. Now I can bring up the uh, workloads and looking at these workloads, you don't need all of them, but I do know for sure that you'll need two, uh, one specifically being game development with Unity, and the other one being universal Windows platform development. Now going to individual components, uh, you don't need all of these also, but these are the ones I have. So if you run into issues, then maybe you can compare uh, your individual components to mine um, using this video. So I'll just start scrolling and you can pause the video to compare. Let's start with making a new Unity project. So we'll name it Ross Sharp Tutorial and make sure it's a 3D project and click Create. All right, so next we'll click File and Build Settings. Then we'll click Universal Windows Platform and change the target device to HoloLens. Then we can keep the rest of the settings the same and then click Switch Platform. Now we'll import the Mixed Reality Toolkit. If we go to the Mixed Reality Toolkit releases by Microsoft, uh, then we can get the latest version of MRTK. So I'm using version 2.5.1. And I will put the links to the files in this tutorial in the description of this video. Uh, so what we'll need is the MRTK Unity Foundation package here, and just download that, and that's all we'll need. I think if you are upgrading versions, then you'll need the uh, tools version also uh, at the bottom here, uh, 2.5.1. And I, I don't have experience upgrading, so I don't know how th that works. Next, we'll go to Assets, right-click it, and click Import Package. Then we'll click the Custom Package and go to where we downloaded the MRTK Foundation Package. Uh, click that and then open it and let that import. Then the screen will pop up. Click All to make sure everything gets imported and then click Import. Once that's done, this window will pop up and we can leave all the settings the same and just click apply. Then we'll go back to build settings and hit player settings. And in player settings, there'll be a few things we need to check. Um, one being virtual reality supported under XR settings in player. Once that's done, we can change the audio spatializer in the MRTK window and then hit apply. Then we want to change this from 24-bit depth to 16-bit depth. Then in the publishing settings right above it, we're going to want two things checked. One being the internet client server and the private network client server. Then we'll go to other settings and we'll need to make sure that graphics jobs is not checked. 
and then the optimize mesh data box is unchecked. That'll just help with reducing the build time. And I think that's everything we need. So we can exit out of that um, and exit out of that also. Next, we'll want to bring in Ross Sharp. Uh, the Ross Sharp I'm using is a fork of another fork of the original Ross Sharp. Um, this is done by Eric, and it's made to be compatible with the Universal Windows platform. So what we'll do is we can download the zip, and then open that up, and then we can extract it. Extract it wherever you want. So once that folder is extracted, uh, go to the File Explorer and navigate to the folder you, you have it in. And then click into it and go to Unity 3D, then click Assets, then Ross Sharp. And then check to make sure there's a link XML file. This is important for the project to work. Then go back to Assets and then drag the Ross Sharp folder into your assets in Unity. Once that's done importing, we can go back to Ross Sharp Master, then click Project Setup, Ross Sharp Unity, uh, you can go there, and then hit Assets. Then take the plugins folder within assets and drag that into your asset area in Unity. So now that everything is imported, you should see two tabs up here at the top. Uh, one of the tabs being the Rossbridge client and the other tab being the Mixed Reality Toolkit. Two other things we'll need are one being the Windows 10 SDK I'm using Windows 10 SDK version uh, 10.0.19041.0. That's the newest version that they have. And we'll also need the HoloLens 2 emulator, which can be found here uh, at this site. And I'll link this in the video description. Uh, but we need the newest version, the December 2020 update. Uh, that's the one I'm using. Next, you'll want to go to Control Panel, and this is actually a step that's shown in the HoloLens 2 tutorial, uh, but what you need is to click Programs, and then Programs and Features, and then turn Windows Features on or off. Here, we'll want to check the box Hyper-V. This is just necessary to run the HoloLens 2 emulator on your computer. Now we'll add some game objects to our Unity scene. For this next part, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect to an odometry topic using the ROS connector. You may not have a ROS program that publishes odometry values, but you can still uh, see the program connect to the topic. So we'll select cube from the 3D object. Then we'll add an empty game object to hold the ROS connector. And then the last thing we'll add is another 3D object, which will be a sphere. Next, I'm going to make the objects a little smaller, so I'll make the scale 0.2. And what's going to happen is this cube is going to take the odometry values and move according to it. Next, click the game object and click Add Component, and then type in Ross Connector and add that in. Here we have two components, the serializer and the protocol. So the protocol, we want this to be WebSocket UWP. And then for the serializer, we want it to be the Newtonsoft JSON. We'll get to the Rossbridge server URL in a sec. Uh, next, we'll add the com another component and type in odometry subscriber. Here, I make the topic uh, slash estimated odom. Then click the cube and drag that over to the published transform. This will move the cube according to my odometry values. Next we'll go up to the MRTK tab and click add to scene and configure. 
This will add these two game objects to your scene. One thing that I learned in the MRTK tutorials is that when you run the HoloLens 2 of the emulator, it automatically renders the mesh of your environment. So one thing you can do here in the Mixed Reality Toolkit game object is create a custom profile that will allow you to tell it not to render that mesh. However, you can still use the environment data. So next, go to the Mixed Reality Toolkit game object and go to this profile here and click Clone. I add custom at the beginning of the name and then hit clone. Then going back to the Mixed Reality Toolkit again, we want to click Spatial Awareness. And then on the next profile you, you see there, you're going to want to click clone again. And then name it, I name it custom at the beginning and click clone. Then go back to the same game object and click this drop down menu. And as you can see, everything is still read only. So we're going to need to clone this last profile and then again add custom to the beginning of the name and hit clone. Now you can see that we can edit all of these values uh, because the default profiles are read only so you can't edit any of them until you make a new profile. And so here where it says display option at the beginning at the bottom of display settings click occlusion. So what happens here is the mesh data won't render, but if an object goes beyond your environment, it'll disappear. So that's all you need to do there. Uh, one thing I forgot is name that game object with the ROS connector in it, ROS connector. Now I will minimize Unity and now we'll get the server URL. So I use VMware. Uh, you can use any other virtual machine that you'd like. If you're having problems with the IP address of your virtual machine, this could be the possible fix for you. So here you can see that the virtual machine defaults to having a private network, but we want it to be on the same network as the HoloLens or even our computer. So what you'll need to do is go here, uh, go through edit and then click virtual network editor and then click change settings. And then here, I've already added it, but you want to uh, click Bridged Network. Then in Automatic Settings, click that. And you can see I have this Realtek PCIe selected, but before all of them were selected. So you'll want to figure out which one of these your computer uses to directly connect to your router. Once you figure that out, just press OK. And as you can see, there isn't anything that says Connected in Host Connection. Click OK. So you may need to restart your VM after that. Uh, then click Play to start it up. And the version of Ubuntu I'm using is 18.04 and I'm using ROS Melodic. So now that that's loaded up, we'll make it a little smaller and then we will open up a new terminal. And in this terminal, we'll make a new directory uh, I'm going to call mine Ross Bridge Connector. Then we'll want to change into the directory. So now go to Google again. We're going to need one other thing. We're going to go to this repository called Ross Bridge Suite by Robot Web Tools. Go here to code and copy the repository link. And then we're going to clone that into a source directory within the Rossbridge connector package that we made. Once that's done, check the source directory to make sure everything's there. Then we can go back one and type catkin make to build the workspace. And while that's building, we can open a new terminal and type in hostname dash uppercase I. This first IP address here is the IP address you want to use for the Rossbridge server URL. This is what you want to replace localhost with um, so that we can connect to the topics being published by the project in our virtual machine. Now let's go back to our Rossbridge connector workspace and type Ross launch Rossbridge server 
and rossbridge websocket.launch. So if you run that command and get this error here, import error no module named built-ins, then there is a solution, a temporary fix for that right now. This is a, as of the time of this video. So what I did was typed in sudo apt get install python future, and this fixes that problem. So after that fix, let's go back down and we'll change back into our Ross Bridge connector workspace. And then we'll type the same command, Ross launch, Ross Bridge server, Ross Bridge websocket dot launch. Now bring back up the Unity editor and to make sure that this is the correct IP address, we can change the protocol from WebSocket UWP to WebSocket Sharp. This is the way we can connect directly from the Unity editor to our WebSocket. So now click play. And as you can see in our WebSocket program, we have one total client connected and it's subscribed to the estimated ODOM topic. Okay, now looking in the game window, you can move around using the WASD keys and you can see that we have the cube in our window. So I already have a project built that allows me to publish to the estimated ODOM topic that the Unity editor is subscribed to. So I'll launch that. Now, as you can see, the cube moves based off of the data that's being published to the estimated ODOM topic. Now we know the Rossbridge WebSocket is working so far. Okay, so that's good. Now we'll end all the different processes and we'll need to go back to the Ross connector and change the change back to WebSocket UWP. And then we'll go back to here, uh, go to file and build settings, then click build. Then in our project directory, we're gonna wanna create a new folder and we'll call this folder builds. Go into builds and then create another new folder and we'll call this Ross tutorial build. Then select that folder and let that build. Once that's done building, you'll see in the Unity editor there are three errors or possibly more. Uh, that's okay, it can still build. So then go into our build folder and click the tutorial build. Then up here at the top, we're going to change the solution platform to x86. And then we're going to change the machine to the HoloLens 2 emulator. And I'm using version 10.0.19041.1131. And I think that's the latest version as of this video. Once that's done, go to the Solution Explorer and click Ross Sharp Tutorial. And then click References. And at the bottom of references, you'll see that there is a something called Windows Mobile. I have errors when I have Windows Mobile in here. I think I'm missing something. So I just remove it and it works fine. Sometimes I can't get into references from this Solution Explorer. So I need to go back into our build and then click this, the VCX project file and inside the VCX project file, click that, click that. We can click into the Ross Shop tu tutorial again, go to references, and then you can delete it there. Um, so I'll move that, uh, save, save again. You can overwrite that. And now everything should work fine. Now we can test our project on the emulator. So first we'll want to go back to our VM and make sure that the WebSocket is still up. So that's still up and we can press play and wait for that to build. Now, if you run into this problem here, just press okay and then run it again and it should work fine. Okay, so now that's up, 
and you can see in our WebSocket that the client is connected and it's subscribed to the estimated ODOM topic like before. And the screen is black just because of where my camera starts out and because I'm inside the objects. So if I run my ROS project again, you can see that there is a cube and a sphere and the cube moves according to the estimated ODOM data. Now we know the WebSocket is working on our virtual machine and it is correctly sending data from the VM to our Unity project running on the HoloLens 2 emulator. Okay, so now we can stop the simulation. Now I'm going to demonstrate using the emulator some things you need to do on the actual HoloLens 2 to get it ready for our project. So bring up this menu here and you're going to want to click settings and then go to update and security. Then looking at the panel on the left, you're going to want to go to four developers and then turn on developer mode. Um, this is something I can't do in the emulator right now. But then another thing you're going to need to do is pair your device and it'll give you this six digit code, which you'll need to pair using Visual Studio. You only need to pair the device with your computer once, but if you exit out of the pair code, you're going to get a new one. Uh, so if you have problems pairing, then this might be why. Next, I'm going to go back to Visual Studio and change from debug to release, and then from x86 to ARM64, and then remote machine is correct. Then I'm going to go to the project tab and click properties at the bottom. Then I'm going to turn on my HoloLens 2. Okay, and then I'm going to click Debugging. And then you see here where it says Machine Name, we're going to click the Down button and click Locate. And here you can see the IP address of my HoloLens. And then you're going to want to add that IP address to the address box. Then hit Select. And then when you hit Apply, I think you'll be prompted with the pin box where you need to input the pin from the HoloLens 2 and then click OK. And now at this point you should be able to click Play Remote Machine and it'll send the application to your HoloLens 2 and it should work just like it did with the emulator.